Today is uh, early morning, Monday, December 27th, 2010. thought I'd do a short video on uh, using and comparing and the value and the differences of an oscilloscope and a spectrum analyzer. The oscilloscope here has, as we know, its vertical display is amplitude, its horizontal display is time. On the spectrum analyzer, the, the vertical display is amplitude, just like on the oscilloscope, but the horizontal display is frequency. So this is frequency domain, this is time domain. The abscissa, or the x-axis, the ordinate or the y-axis. Same here. Just different terms that we use in math to uh, describe horizontal and vertical. First thing I'm going to do is display a square wave. The square wave is running at one kilohertz. We're using this generator right here. This one, the uh, FG501A function generator. It'll generate a square, a triangular, and a sign. So it's pretty good. We have to play with it a little bit. Right now I've got it in a calibrate, let's see, yeah, calibrated position so it puts out a perfect square wave. One kilohertz, 999 hertz, hertz kilohertz. <clears throat> we got this on 0.1 milliseconds and it's 10 across so it's uh, one millisecond. We know that time and frequency are reciprocals of each other. Reciprocal of a thousand is a millisecond. Reciprocal of a millisecond is uh, one kilohertz. Okay, with uh, this instrument in, in its calibrated mode, so we get a virtual perfect square wave, what we end up over here with is the perfect example of a square wave and only the odd harmonics. So how do we know that? Well, here's how you read it off. There's the one kilohertz. As we, as we move this, we move the display around. So since we know we're at a kilohertz, we look over here, we center it. With this little knob right here, we turn this until the display is perfectly centered. There we go. And it's a kilohertz. Or we can set this on exactly a kilohertz and then we use a zero cal and we can move this around a little bit. As you can see it jumping around slightly. We put it right in the very center. We know we're dealing with a kilohertz because that's what our frequency meter is telling us. So there's our kilohertz. There's our kilohertz. It's dead center. Now we have a harmonic out here. If we turn this until we move that harmonic over the center right where we calibrated our one kilohertz when we get it right in the center we look at it I look at it again get as close as we can there voila three kilohertz so we have a fundamental one kilohertz three in, in a diminishing order here of amplitude one three if we move this one over we can read its frequency as five. One, three, five, seven. So it's going to continue. Now here's an interesting thing about a square wave that I found kind of fascinating that I actually just kind of discovered just playing around with it. Let's, uh, let's change our scales over here so we can get a few more in there. There we go, just so we can kind of line them up kind of nice there. If we change the symmetry of our square wave even a little bit, I'm going to uncalibrate this. We've got to run our, our frequency back up to a kilohertz. We've got to, got to make sure that we're, we're staying pretty square here and always measuring the same thing. So let's get back down to a kilohertz. There we go. Let's don't play around this thing too much. Okay, there we go. 
now there, there's our square wave and there's our spectral displays again about what we were looking at a while ago but if we let me get up back here a little bit I'm going to change right here the symmetry of the square wave just slightly not much and look what happens see it's not off square much I just slid this over slightly I can move this thing around like that but I'll just move it over ever so slightly to there just a little bit even now look at our spectral display there's our kilohertz again 1.0 the next harmonic now is not a predominant harmonic but it is there and it's right out there at 2 kilohertz so by just uh, putting a little bit of uh, changing the symmetry of the square wave we changed the harmonic profile considerably I found that very interesting I wasn't really aware of how sensitive it was and if we again adjust up here we can actually tell when our square wave is actually square again because our, our even frequency harmonics go away there it is see I'm, I'm surpassing it going the other direction there we go once I get it about right they go away virtually go away and our square wave is square again you know symmetry between the the positive pulse and the negative pulse okay now right here in this old calculus book this has got some really nice Fourier equations for a square wave there it is right there square wave and there's a series Fourier series for common waveforms and if you plot that with a little mathematical program it it turns out pretty good okay the next one which is kind of interesting is is a sawtooth. The sawtooth is a very common one. There we go. And there is its equation. So we'll go back up to here. We'll change this to sawtooth. And we want to keep it at a kilohertz. We want to as I vary this right here I can vary the, the symmetry of it. So I'm going to turn it into a square wave. I'll make sure I keep my frequency reasonably close 1 kilohertz so that we're not tricking ourselves here whoops it's easy to go past it there we go that's about as close as we can get now we got a nice we got a nice sawtooth and here is the harmonic profile of our sawtooth still at 1 kilohertz so that we, if we move this to 1.0 we should have our fundamental frequency back in the middle we can amplify it a little bit right here okay now we have a different harmonic profile what is this harmonic profile it's different from the square wave and it's different from the uh, non-symmetrical square wave so we'll move this pulse over to the center and read it off and that happens to be 2 kilohertz the next one is going to be 3 and it goes to right in line with what we've been taught but it's interesting I think sometimes to see it there's 3 kilohertz a square wave contains only the odd harmonics a sawtooth contains all the harmonics odd and even in a descending uh, amplitude still at a kilohertz and lastly we'll do a um, a triangular wave we'll change the up here again using this we'll change this to a nice triangle over our oscilloscope so we can get it as reasonably it uh, looks like a nice little triangle and then we go back let's keep our frequency right on a kilohertz so close as we reasonably can not burning up too much time there we go 
and we put our we put our meter back to a kilohertz. Yep, make sure our pulse is in the middle. And look at that harmonic profile. Kind of interesting, isn't it? It's got a second harmonic and a third. It looks like that. Uh, well, let's see if that is a second, because it can fool you. Let's move that. Let's move this guy over, and then read it off again. I think it is. Yeah, there. There's our two. Up there. So we. So we got um, second harmonic. We got a stronger third, a fourth, a fifth. So the uh, the odd harmonics are dominant, but it does have even harmonics. We can always amplify this up if we want to exaggerate it somewhat. There we go. That's a that's a nice display. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, but still diminishing. So those are those are the the really classic equations for the uh, the square wave, which Fourier series, the triangular wave, and it's here. You can Google all this. You don't need to see too much of this. And there's our our sawtooth but uh, I just think it's very interesting the uh, what kind of information can be gleaned from a uh, frequency domain device versus a time domain device hope this is helpful there is one more spectral display that I almost forgot to include which is probably the most important for us group of people that uh, enjoy audio and that's the spectral display of a sine wave uh, here's something kind of interesting there's our sine wave at a kilohertz we're using the same oscillator except I'm using the sine position and I push this little button in which uh, calibrates it and uh, since we have a distortion analyzer that is four sine waves we have point to about 0.26 percent distortion at about 1.14 volts or so and here's uh, what the spectral display of a sine wave looks like that's it just one little pulse with no harmonics now if we start cranking it up we'll start seeing some not yet remember we're at uh, about 0.26 percent so we're going to see if we can see any harmonics out there there should be some this uh, display right down here, I believe, is the uh, once the amp, once the gain gets up so high, we start seeing a little bit of 120 hertz uh, power supply noise down here. So that's what this piece is. We can ignore it. So our, we can barely, barely see some little glitches beginning to appear here. If we crank it up again, there we go. We can see some harmonics in there. This is, I would guess. We'll move it over and measure it. This is probably second harmonic. Yeah, there it is up there. At two kilohertz. Second, and this one out here, I'm going to guess is maybe out at four. So it looks like we've got some even harmonics in the, in this particular. There we go. Four kilohertz. So we've got our our fundamental. We got the second harmonic, fourth harmonic, which um, is actually what we're reading off up here is 0.26 percent. Now, if we go over to a very low distortion oscillator, this one, which I've already adjusted to make this a little easier, about the same voltage, but now we're down to nine parts per million. 0.0009 percent this is in percent so nine to ten parts per million still at a kilohertz we're up very slightly here we go again there's our fundamental there's our power supply noise that we're ignoring there she looks on this oscilloscope which we really can't tell any difference from the other one and our frequency as we start amplifying this one up a while ago we could see the the second and the fourth harmonic we see nothing here if we amplified enough after a while I think enough amplification we started ending up getting into the anomalies of the uh, spectrum analyzer itself we still see nothing we still see no harmonics out here our power supply noise and our fundamental and that's it at 
point zero 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 nine to ten percent nine to ten parts per million we see no harmonics let's move it back once more to the one where we've got more distortion here not bad distortion but then there it is right there there's our second fourth and even out there probably sixth I would guess harmonic which is actually causing that and we can identify which ones are which with a spectrum analyzer whereas we cannot see it with uh, our oscilloscope and we can detect it here but we don't know what it is but here we know what it is but in the best condition let's go back to the other one best condition all we have in a sine wave is is our fundamental we have no harmonics get this thing down to where it's in a little bit better range there we go that's what we want in a perfect world hope this helps